so I had a rule with myself today that I had to get my videos done before I could do any playing, but I'm exporting, so I have a minute. So I got these Simon Hurley stamping foams, and I saw that he, I mean, the I'm gonna call him a boy. He's like 20, he's younger than my daughter. So what you do with these is you heat them up and then you can use them on stamps, you can use them on, uh, these guys, what are those dies? <laughs> you can use them on stencils. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to make, first we're gonna try it, right? But then what I thought was, look at how perfect, cause I have some, I'm working on those uh, pages I glued down the other day, but look at how perfect, let's see, does this go all the way around that? border goes all the way around but the girls that I did the border didn't go all the way around right so I was thinking how cool would it be like half of this is exactly the right size for one of my borders right so I was thinking we should try this out okay so we're going to try it with um let's try with dies first so I have okay I'm going to put this off to the side I have, ooh, number dies. How cool would that be? We could make our own little number die situation. And I think he's, um, he's adorable. He does like bunnies and kitties and things like that. Um, and he makes cards, so he's a super nice guy. I'm just not, I don't do stuff that, that, that's quite that cute. So let's see first if we can make a number stamp. All right, so what you do is you heat this for 10 to 15 seconds. 15. Okay, that stamped that right in there. Okay, so now we are going to try, it's really cute. Now, that having been said, those are very big dies, and if I had used this on the little size I'm thinking, it probably wouldn't have worked. So I am going to use my Speedball brayer, which is a nice soft brayer. These little brayers um, are harder brayers, so we may find that we like the harder brayer better. Sammy, it's okay. There's some thunder and lightning going on here. So we may get some doggy weirdness. Um, okay, so I have this fun page that I've been working on for a background or for stuff. So I think it'll be fun to try it on here. Let's move our dies because I don't think, I don't think this size of number die is the right size. And I will put a link to this, uh, this book that I made I put all my dies like this because I wasn't using them and it made me very sad and now that I have it in this little book I use them all the time okay so we're gonna put and he seemed to like to use um like water reactive dyes pigments dyes dyes um but for me that isn't a very good solution we're going with speckled egg paint that isn't a very good solution because I can't have watery bits in the middle of my um, mixed media projects, but distress paint is water reactive when it's wet. And then once it dries, it's permanent. So I thought it would be fun to try this with some distress paint. So let's see what happens. All right, let's give it another spritz. And what he said would happen is what happened. Imagine that, he knows what he's talking about with his own thing. Um, so, so instead of just getting part of it, you're getting kind of everything but the smushed in part, right? So let's do this one this way. There we go. 
cute. All right, so dyes work great on this. Let's get our surface cleaner. We'll clean that off. We'll just clean. Look at us cleaning everything. Usually I don't clean stuff off, but because I want to use these um, these blending foams more than once. So, so the thought is that you're going to be able to um, use these blending foams and they're for card makers, okay? So what happens is these, uh, the card makers, this is exactly the right size to make a card, but I'm gonna hack the crap out of this, okay? So let's look at, <laughs> poor things. Okay, so let's look at what we can do. So I have littler numbers, so I can make some littler numbers. Okay, so what he said to do is you're going to, I don't want my six and my nine together because then it looks like it's, um, the same number. All right, so let's do this, let's do this. Let's see how these guys do. Oh my goodness, and look. So because I don't really, I only really use them for mixed media, a lot of my stamp, or my dies have those things still in them. So we'll have to make sure to take those apart. There's my, my one from my other set. Okay, there we go. All right, all right. Okay, so this one I want to try. Can you hear that thunder? It's really loud, I'm sorry. Okay, so this one I want to try on the edge. Because what I'm thinking, all right, so you heat it again and it comes out. Right, the foam expands, and then whatever you did before comes out. One. Okay, and he said you got to get it in there pretty fast. Oh, look, it went right in. Okay, so now we have this skinny one. Let's do blue. And I wonder, I'm going to have to do this video in two parts, because I kind of wonder... Um, how long this will remain like this, right? Um, because if it's heat that expands it, yeah, see, that's really cool. It's like you can make your own little custom sized stamps just for mixed media. So I wonder if um, it will just eventually pop itself out or if it will always maintain kind of that. Ooh, let's see if we don't have to brayer it on. Yeah. So that's what happens with all of everything I've done so far. If you don't brayer it on, it kind of gets in the goobies of it. So that's okay. That's kind of sort of what I expected to happen because that's what happens with um, any time I've used paint with stamps. Normal stamps even, right? Not ones where I'm making the, the thing. Anyway, so what I was saying is I'm going to have to leave it for like a week and see if it expands itself out. Maybe not a week, but we'll wait a few days. Oops, garbage. Or if it can maintain itself over a period of time. If the only way it will clean itself off is... Um, Okay, water didn't do as well as my Grove Ladies' Day cleaner did. And that's probably not the um, spongy foam thing. That's probably the distress paint. Yeah. Okay, so we know now that those work. It's kind of cute, but I don't know if I love, love it. I don't know if it's like 
cool enough to make a stamp from. So let's keep going. This is fun. All right. This is a disc bound journal. So if your pages pop out, you just put them right back in. Okay, so let's see what we have. This may not be the best one. Oh yeah, there's a really good one. Some of these little cheap ones don't stick as well to the um, to the magnets as the quality ones. Nope, that isn't what I was looking for. This is what I was looking for. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> I lost my pin. Okay, so we're gonna have to push all the papers I have stuck in there. Okay, so let's try this one, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this in half. I'll be right back. I gotta get an X-Acto knife. Okay, so I decided against an X-Acto knife, and I decided to go with a serrated kitchen knife. And we're gonna put this on here, and we're gonna cut right along the middle of this. And I don't care that they're the right size, and the reason I didn't go with X-Acto is I would be hacking it. But this seems to be working okay. Ha, 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 ha. Look at that. That's great. Okay. Perfect. So now, because I don't need card size stamps, I need... Oh, we forgot to, oh, look, see, it didn't go away right away, so it's still there. Let's see if we can still get this up. We probably should have done this when it was wet, because Distress Paint dries solid. So, if you get four of these in each one, which you do, I can make eight little different sides of dye, you know, eight of these little stampy things to use in my mixed media. Okay, so we're gonna warm this guy up. Cute. Okay, now Simon did say you could use, all right, let's put our dye back in. Now, Simon did say you can use uh, ink, and I need to use permanent ink, and he did say it will discolor your stamp, which I'm fine with. Let's call a spade a spade. Everything I own is discolored. All right, so we're gonna use archival distress inks. You get a hint of it. Don't get me wrong. You get a hint of it. Oh, how about, okay, let's try this. Maybe that wasn't fair. So let's do this. We're gonna come over here to this corner. Just turn it into quite a cool background. All right, instead of doing it that way, he said he rubs his ink pad. Oh my goodness. Okay, well that looks like a heck of a lot more ink pad to start with. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so it's not the little brush, it is rubbing the ink pad on it. Okay, so I like that one. I'm gonna keep that one just like it is cause this is what I'm saying. Say I, and I don't know I have as many. Okay, there's one, okay. So say I have a little background like this, and I won't make it that really bright blue, I'll make it, um, this is faded jeans blue. Say I wanna make it a little background, it's just the right size that I can make borders in my magazine clutch. Now I wanna make one down here too. 
I don't want to have that just in one place. And then for magazine collage, I don't want it to be exactly the same. So I'm going to make this one go up. And that one can go over. But look at that. That's very cool. And then I can doodle around that. And then because it's archival ink, it, will, um, it won't bleed into my other stuff. Ooh, this is exciting. Okay. So that is awesome. Another thing I wanted to do was to have skinnier ones. And I thought, oh my goodness, I could make those with these along the side. So I just got this stamp set and this stamp set is nice. And usually what I would wind up doing is cutting the stamp set into little pieces because I don't ever need that big a piece. But let's see what happens. And this is a, a, a Stampers Anonymous stamp set. Let's see what happens if we use a stamp. Okay, I forgot to turn you on, but all I did was heat the side of this and then put it in the stamp. Now it's gonna give you the opposite impression, right? So you're gonna get, the circles are gonna be open and then the top is gonna be plain because this is circles, so it's backwards. And then what I was worried about, I was like, oh my gosh, so I um, don't want to get that messed up. So now let's see how this goes. And it didn't seem to bother the one that was on the side of it. Okay, so now I think I am gonna use this fancier color. And this is Mermaid Lagoon, yeah, this is Mermaid Lagoon. Okay, so now let's see how this goes. <laughs> I love that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Circles. I love the circles. Okay. This will always work better if you're stamping on a hard surface rather than stamping up in the air. Look at that. That is cute. I'm going to do one more down here. I don't think you can see down here. But this is turned from experimenting to actually working in my journal. Okay, what I don't think would work based on this is um, this side <laughs> that I've hacked up. Okay, we're gonna try one last thing because that nice Simon Hurley said you could also use stencils because the, um, the stamp was an Audi. See how this is an Audi? And these are innies. I bet you we're going to get raised circles from the stencil. And you may be thinking, why don't I just tell her to stop? Well, Sammy's deaf. She's uh, about 16, 17 years old, and she's pretty deaf. She can't hear very well. There we go. Circly bits. Okay, now let's see. Let's do it on here. I don't want to go into any other colors. We could do a gray. All right, let's see how gray works. So I think if I pressed really lightly, nope, you're still going to get, oh, that's kind of cool. So you get, um, you get kind of the, the thing like this where you get the circly bits and the background. So it's kind of filled in. Oh my goodness, for backgrounds, that is amazing, right? For my mixed media backgrounds. So now I don't just, oh, the stencils are my jam. I don't just have to, all right, let's go on this one. So green is the color there. So we're gonna let this dry for one second because it's archival, it's gonna, um, so I don't have really any other colors in here. So now I just want to put a little bit of color on this edge right here. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I am going to be using my stamp so much more, or my um, ink pad so much more. Now that I can make my own stamps out of my stencils, that is really kind of crazy pants. Okay, 
So on the Simon Hurley foam, I am in, count me in, and you will see me using these going forward. How cool is that? But I will wait a little bit to um, finish this video uh, and see how long these actually last. Okay. So I want to make a page in my, um, for my Mademoiselle 1986. <laughs> um, and I am going to use the Simon Hurley stamps. This is the second part of the video. It's been a while since I did them. And I, I don't know, I think they are warping, right? Like, if you can see, there's like a little edge to them. I'm sure if I um, if I heated them, they would unwarp. But what I cared about was that they would keep that. Um, well, I guess they're all warping. Maybe they just warp. Um, ooh, the edges are warped on that one. I don't know whether it's because I hacked them up. Right, so I cut them in all different shapes. So I have, what I did was, I had the other half of this one, right, that I didn't do anything with yet. I cut one of them in half again like that. I cut one of them in half long ways, and I cut one of them in half, oh, this one is kind of, that's that one, that's that one. Okay, so there were four of them in the pack. They're like super cheap. So what I'm gonna do now is I want to use my stencils to make cool patterns in these things. So the first pattern I wanna make is this Vicki Booten stencil that I use all the time because I love how the um, circly bits do it. So um, the fact that I can hold this in a stencil, I'm gonna do it for sure. So. I'm gonna fast forward every time I heat this. It's gonna be 10 to 15 seconds, and then you need to turn it over super fast. Look, a cat hair, imagine that. And then you need to turn it over super fast, and then it will um, get the pattern of that stencil. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I don't feel like I especially got it on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this up. And it's gonna undo it, and we're gonna do it again. Okay, now I'm pushing down on all the sides. Okay, there we go. I could tell when it came off that it was gonna be better. So I love how that turned out. Okay, now for me, I'm gonna make all the different sides of these. Um, so the next one I'm gonna do, I had, oh, here it is. This is a Wicked Cool stencil from Seth Apter that I am going to use. And maybe I put it on the other side of this one. And what's going to happen, though, is just so you know, so you don't get mad, is uh, you want to turn it over and do it backwards. So do your stencil backwards so that when... You put your stamp on frontwards, it'll reverse it and make your stencil back right. Anyways, just do your stamp backwards. Ooh, that came out great. All right. Okay, so I am going to do a whole bunch of different stencils and I will be back. Okay, so now this is gonna get fun because I made a whole bunch of those borders. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stick down some papers. And I don't necessarily wanna go all the way to the border and I split up the, um, there was a black ad. So obviously um, ink will not go over a black ad. So let's move this over here. It will go over the girl. Okay, get into a travel career. And I don't want this to be completely covered. That's not my goal. Because I'm gonna make a border with those Simon Hurley foam stamps. And there'll be something in the middle here because that's what magazine collage is. I don't know if I told you that's what I was doing. 
But that is what I'm doing. Bower of Texas. Okay, here's the other dark piece. There's a little dark piece. And I am using Art Glitter Glue for this. Um, I use either Art Glitter Glue or um, Nuvo. Nuvo's my favorite. I did a whole video about the best glues. And Art Glitter Glue might have won, except for the nozzle gets stuck a lot. And that and I have to say, trying to get the, the glue out of this nozzle is actually hurting my hand. And if I had to do a ton of gluing today, I think it would, um, I wouldn't be able to do it. If I just had art glitter glue, I would, I would wind up switching over to the Nuvo because this, um, this glue has trouble managing itself. Okay. So, the reason we can't have nice scissors is because we cut gluey things with our scissors. Okay, so now we're gonna get down permanent inks. So I use archival ink. Uh, those are Tim Holtz colors. And then I have two Wendy Vecchi colors, a watering can and thistle. Okay, so we want really bright colors on here. And let's go blue, let's go mermaid. And you just take your ink pad, put it over, stamp it down, mermaids. Okay, let's do a crisscross lemon drop. Ooh, let's do this color. And you're just going to rub your thing over there and see how it got all around the edges. Wait till you see what happens. Oh, look at that. I set it down. Oh, nice. So it gave me kind of an effect like that. You probably want to let them, what that tells me is we probably want to try to let them dry in between, which, okay. Okay. I have 11 billion of these. Okay, so I try to get it, see how it's kind of on the bottom too? Not just on the top, because when you do it on the bottom too, oh, that didn't do very good. Orange is not very good. Let's do red, see if red works better. Oh, much better. Cool. And I actually got, I think, two colors on there. Okay. Oh, now we have these ones. I love these ones. Okay, let's do blue jeans. Ah, I got a twofer. Oh, maybe that's part of the problem is that it still has a lot of ink on it. Oh, that was the problem. It has a lot of ink on it. So we're going to have to have a little sidecar thing to get the rest of the ink off. Okay, let's do, what was this? This was thistle. Let's do, watering can's kind of a gray. I don't want a gray. How about green? Ooh, green. And I wish I had more archival colors to use, but we don't, so let's do this this way. And then let's ink up kind of the just the bottom part of it and do this this way. Nice. And so I'll probably doodle them or paint them or do something like that. But this is just to me a fantastic way to get a little bit of color around. Ooh, there's a cool one that I did before. <laughs> just a fantastic way to get a little bit of color around the border 
without having to work very hard on it. Ooh, let's do a, let's do this last one with this. Um, I'm super excited for this one, the Seth After one, to see what happens with the flip. You wanna do a pink? Do we think a pink will work? We could do a pink right there. Ooh, I have, so now I feel like I have a ton of really cool stamps, because I was just gonna go, oh, I would really like to do the, the Vicki Booten one too. Oh, that's cool. And then maybe we do the inside a little bit. Okay, so I flipped it over backwards, but we could have done it forward and then the word would have been right. I don't care. Do we wanna do all pink on the inside? I think I'm gonna do all pink on the inside. So for me personally, I feel like this is a way for me to use my inks and to use my stencils in a different way than what I'm used to using them as. And so I am super excited for this because I didn't use inks all that much because to yank out, I mean, think about it. I used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different things, I wouldn't, I just wouldn't get out seven different stamps and then ink them and then put them away and do all that. But this way, I can make a super colorful background in just a couple minutes and that was actually very fun. So I thought you guys might like to see what the final version of this stamp project turned out. I love how it came out with all the different patterns on the edges. Hopefully that helps. I will put a link to the Simon Hurley stamp foams in the description and Tara Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life.